This lesson deals with supplemental problem 9.4. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the chapter 9 supplemental problems on page 5. The circuit shown below here is called an overvoltage indicator, where the input voltage can be positive or negative, and there's two LEDs in series with a 9 volt and a minus 9 volt source with respect to a common wire. Could you find the values of Vn that would cause D1 and D2 to light? If it takes at least a milliamp of current, for the LEDs to show some visible light. Let's replace the LEDs by their model, which consists of an ideal diode and a voltage based on the color of the LED. So the red LED in the class notes was about 1.6 volts. Same thing for diode 2, put an ideal diode in, and then a battery in series with that of 1.6 volts. Now you can put the battery on either side of the ideal diode because things are in series so we can add them in any order. I put them on this side of the diode in both cases so that I can combine these two voltages into one. This would be 10.6 volts and this would be a minus 10.6 volts. Now we have ideal diodes again, so we're going to replace them by resistors and then try to guess the direction of current. Now if diode 1 was on and had a milliamp or more of current in it, what would that mean? Well, since these diodes are in this direction, these batteries can only absorb power. Current can only go in this direction. So the only source of power is Vn. Current has to come out of here when it's positive, and that current can go this way, but if it tries to go this way, the diode is an open circuit. So I'm going to guess that diode 1 is on and diode 2 is off. So let's analyze the circuit. The rise in voltage is Vn. The current in the 10K resistor now is ID1, because this is an open, and then plus the voltage 10.6. If ID1 is 1 milliamp, then this equation is 10K times 1 milliamp plus 10.6. If it increases, then Vn will also increase. And so it's going to be greater than or equal to because the current is greater than or equal to 1 milliamp. This would be 10 plus 10.6 or 20.6. So whenever the input is positive and greater than 20.6, LED1 lights up. Now we should check that diode 2 is off. Here's the rise in voltage. That would equal the drops of minus 10.6, minus 10.6, back to here. It's a negative 21.2, and that checks suppose that the other LED lights up, and that would have to be when Vn goes negative. In other words, when Vn is positive in this direction, current would have to come out of here, because again, these batteries can only absorb power, and no current could go this way, because this would be an open circuit, high resistance, and so all the current goes this way. So I'm going to guess that diode 2 is a short, and diode 1 is an open, and we'll verify that that was the correct guess. Right, let's just go around the loop then. The drop in voltage is Vn, the drop is 10.6, and then the current ID2 flows in the 10K resistor. If ID2 was a 1 milliamp, then this would be 10 volts, and that would have 20.6 volts. On the other side of the equation, it would be a minus 20.6 volts. And then if the current increases, then when you bring it on your side, it becomes more negative. Vn then would be less than or equal to minus 20.6 volts when LED2 starts to light. Let's also check that diode 1 is off. So here's my voltage from anode to cathode. Rise in voltage, equal the drops of minus 10.6 and minus 10.6, so minus 21.2, so that checks. And this is how an overvoltage indicator works.